What's up, guys? Mike Dolce, four-time world MMA trainer of the year here, and I'm going to break down the most important foods to eat on fight day. If you like this video, if this content helps you, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We are bringing you the most effective, the most transparent, the most honest information to move you forward in your pursuit of unstoppable strength, conditioning, and athletic performance. Now, the most important foods to eat on fight day, this is going to surprise you. A lot of people think they're secrets. There's some sort of magic recipe that I bust out just before my world-class athletes step into competition. That couldn't be further from the truth. The most important foods to eat during fight day are the exact same foods you've eaten during your training camp. That's right, because... If you introduce something foreign, something new, something you've never eaten before, you don't know how your body's going to respond. When we compete on fight day, now I'm going to tell you exactly what to eat on fight day. Don't worry about this. And I'm going to tell you most importantly, how to structure your meals to ensure you will compete at the best of your ability. So stay with me here. But if you eat something that's new, something foreign, something different, guess what? You don't know how that's going to sell, how your body's going to respond. I call it the box of rock syndrome. You might eat something that seems innocuous. It's not such a big deal. Other people eat it all the time, but you haven't eaten in the last three, six, 12 weeks or so. And guess what? Boom. It's like you just swallowed a box of rocks. You feel sick. You feel gross. Energy tanks. You got to go to the bathroom. You don't know if you're going to vomit or it's going to come out the other end. You now have a mental issue. What's going to happen? How am I going to pee? This completely ruined your last eight weeks of training camp. We don't want to eat anything foreign, nothing new. When I tell my athletes, we don't eat anything different than six weeks prior to competition. We have a robust menu. Where we, eat, we eat four, five, six, seven meals per day every single day in the lead up to the weight cut and competition. The foods that we eat during that time are well familiarized with our digestive system. We know exactly how we're going to perform. What I do with my athletes, I tell them, we treat fight day no different than your hardest sparring day. We want to wake up about the same time. We want to eat about the same foods. But now, this is what we eat on fight day. You want to think about fight day as a succession of meals. Once you've cut weight, once you've you've weighed in, you start the rehydration process. I'll do the, I'll follow the or I'll, I'll break down the rehydration process in another video for you. Today's about fight day. So you've gone through the rehydration process, you've refed your body, you're completely fulfilled, you're ready to complete nutritionally. Now on fight day, when you wake up, you want to have a relatively big breakfast. At the UFC level, UFC fights typically begin. The undercard is usually around 5 p.m. The main event goes off usually around 11 p.m local time withstanding. So if you're going to compete around 5 o'clock in the afternoon or as, as late as, as 10, 11 o'clock at night, you want to have a big breakfast. Breakfast will be the biggest meal of the day on fight day. What we'll typically do is we'll have our normal size breakfast bowl that we would eat on any other hard training day, any hard sparring day in the last two, three, four weeks before competition. We'll have a one and a half to two times the size of our breakfast bowl. We'll get this big meal in our stomach and then we'll go back to bed. We'll lay down we'll relax, we'll let that meal digest, we'll get rid of the nerves, we'll forget about it. We'll, wait, we'll lay down, we'll get a good one, two hour nap, we'll wake up and we'll move a little bit. We'll do what we call a shakeout. We'll get a light shakeout. We'll go, we'll move, we'll grab our coaches, we'll go into the workout room, we'll move the furniture in our hotel rooms and we'll move a little bit. Nothing crazy. We'll break a sweat. We'll talk about the fight. Again, this is managing nerves as much as it is um, physically preparing yourself. It's psychologically preparing yourself to compete. You're going to reinforce all the things you've learned all camp, all the techniques, all the coaching points, all the cueing that your corner will be talking about. This is a team. We sit down. We go over this. This is maybe 11 o'clock in the morning or so, 11, 12 o'clock or so. We get a good shakeout. After the shakeout, we want to go and have a lunch. Lunch is going to, again, be very similar to what we eat during training camp. Probably going to be a couple eggs. Maybe it's a piece of fish, some sort of vibrant vegetables. Maybe it's spinach. Maybe it's asparagus, mushrooms, peppers, onions, something like that. A good omelet, something along those lines, and some sort of complex carbohydrate. Not too much, but enough. 
Maybe we'll make some, some home fries, white potato home, home fries, sweet potato hash. Maybe we'll put a little more oats on the side or some quinoa, maybe some white rice. But it's the carbs that you normally eat, that you normally enjoy. Those are the ones that we're going to be feeding you. This meal should be about the size of your normal lunch. Remember, one and a half to two times the size of breakfast, lunch should be about the same. Now, after that, we're going to relax and just hydrate. We're just going to sip on water. Usually, I'll put a little bit of, of, of electrolyte um, containing ingredients, a little sea salt, a little fresh squeezed lime juice. Maybe we usually stay away from the honey, the sugar. We don't need that anymore because we're optimized. Usually, the salt is going to be the big thing here. We're going to be sipping on water, and then we're just going to snack. We're going to lightly grace. Maybe we're going to have an apple, a handful of almonds, um, some almond butter. Uh, maybe we're going to have a little bit of, of, of vegetables. You know, some people like like carrot sticks or, or, or celery uh, with, with peanut butter into it. Just kind of chewing. Maybe some rice cakes with a little raw honey, a, a half a banana. We're eating about a handful at a time as we get closer. Now, if you're competing at 10 or 11 o'clock, we're going to have a smaller mid-meal. Maybe two to four ounces of chicken, something that digests very easily. Maybe half a cup to a full cup of, of a rice or of a potato. A little bit of, of asparagus or chicken. Maybe some peppers, onions, mushrooms mixed in there also because it's great for digestion. That's kind of what you would have as, as your, your skinny sumo stir fry if you're following our program, our meal plan during your training kit. Remember, one and a half to two times breakfast, one times lunch. And then we're going to graze or have a very light dinner. Dinner is going to be, you know, a third or so of the size of our normal dinner. And then when we get to the venue, we're going to bring some fresh fruit with us. We're going to pick on some grapes, maybe some apple slices, maybe some orange. We're going to bring an avocado, scoop that out. Maybe a little bit of an almond butter. We're going to have some extra honey, a little squeeze bottle of honey if, if just to keep our sugar topped off. Really, that's it. That's it. Pretty simple. This is, is this simple, guys? This is really simple. Nothing crazy. As you get ready to compete, think about this. This is one last bonus tip, pro tip right here. As you get ready to compete, what happens? Stage fright is real. We get nervous. We get anxiety. We get a soft stomach. If we're dumping all sorts of foods and, 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 and you know concoctions, if we're drinking all sorts of shakes and things like that, we're going to get a soft stomach. We're going to get stomach upset. I've seen this time and time again, not with our athletes, but other athletes backstage. They get diarrhea. They're drinking these neon drinks. They're, they're, they're squeezing these goo tabs that they've never had before. They got these, these coaches running around trying to like find something for them to eat in the green room at the venue, which makes no sense. Where's this food come from? They've never eaten some of this crap before. We want to stay away from that. We want to control all the variables and we want to be predictable. We want everything to be predictable. We want no curveballs here, right? We want to understand exactly how our body responds to those meals, exactly how those meals digest, exactly how we perform after eating a succession of very similar ingredients throughout the day. So we know when we make that walk, we are ready to go. Our stomachs feel good. We're fueled. We're energized. We're not heavy. And the last little bit, bit here, guys, we don't want to compete with a full stomach. We want to compete more with an empty stomach. Why is this? Because digestion needs blood flow. There must be blood flow to engage with the digestive process, to help with digestion. What happens if the blood is in the digestive system? Now the blood is not pumping to the hard-working muscles that we need to go out there and vigorously compete. So when we compete, we need to compete with a relatively empty stomach. That's why we do a little bit of a, of a honey, maybe, a little bit of fresh fruit, something that can perk our sugar up, keep our energy nice and high, but will not bog us down and redirect all of that traffic down to our digestive system. I hope this was helpful. I know this is helpful. Any of you who try this, I guarantee you will have tremendous success, especially the more you do this, the more you compete, the more you practice these very simple, structured routines. This is the key to victory. You hear about a lot of elite athletes. They have, they're have they very superstitious about the way they do things. They do things in a very specific way every single time to eliminate variability. So it's very predictable. They know how they're going to feel. They know how they're going to compete. They know how their body is going to react and respond, eliminating as many variables as possible because competing has a wide amount of variables. You don't know what this guy's going to do. Is he going to, you know, run across the octagon and throw a flying knee like Jorge Masvidal? I don't know. Is he going to John Jones and come out and crawl like a spider towards you? I don't know. Is he going to come out and throw a blasting head kick? You don't know. Lots of variables in there that you can't control. So let's 
let's control the variables that we can and no better way to do that than with our nutrition. What do you guys think? How do you compete? Have you had any horror stories? I'd love to hear your horror stories. Leave them in the comments below. Again, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more great videos like this. And until next time, boom.